Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition. Last time, we started our new campaign as Grace the Warlock, and now we are on our mission to find Will the Warlock so we can become Will and Grace. But first, we need to make our way up the beach and find Will, so... I'll take a fish because I would like to be able to camp and sleep later. And then we have a very injured Shadowheart here, but I wonder if we just kind of... Yeah, we could just entirely ignore her, let her spend her days sleeping there on the beach. I'm sure that won't come back to be broken or anything else in any other way later, but hey. We could, of course, speak to her and take her potions of healing from her, but a lack of potions of healing is not the problem we're expecting to have. More fish, more camping supplies. Must have been fishing when these monsters came. Bad luck. Yeah, it's not ideal, is it? There's a little backpack up here. Fresh water. There must be a settlement somewhere nearby. Maybe alluding to the Druid's Grove. More fish for camp supplies. Of course, you need 40 camp supplies in order to take a long rest in the game currently. I do not need to worry about this gentleman's perfumed letter. Alright, so... All alone, currently, our big goal is to get up to where the Druid's Grove is so that we can recruit Will. But to get there, we're going to have to have some fights along the way. Not namely, there's a couple of Intellect Devourers hanging out here. They must be dispatched. And with our Eldritch Blast, we can just about get this one in range before it can see us. Better stay back. One strike could be lethal. So, because we hit them when they weren't really paying attention to what was going on, they now have the Surprised Condition, which lasts one turn. And while they have that condition, they cannot take actions or reactions. So that means we basically get a free orbit of all of the portraits to take another attack action. Unfortunately, we're just rolling terribly. So now the second Intellect Devourer is going to pass and then the first Intellect Devourer is going to take its turn. So I'm going to step back slightly and hopefully that will mean that they have to spend their turn, all their movement coming towards us before they can attack us because they'll only have 30 feet of movement. There you go, their action was spent dashing, which means they're not going to get a chance to attack us this turn. Now, Eldritch Blast is a ranged attack, and so from here, we only have a 90% chance, which is still very high, but you'll see at the left of the screen, it says down arrow, target is too close. So that means if you're making a ranged attack whilst another creature is in a melee ranged attack threat of you, you have disadvantage on ranged attacks. So we can do a 90% chance of doing 1d10 damage, or if we get our dagger out, we can have a 95% chance of doing 1d4 plus 3 damage. So I'm going to take that option for now. And it automatically used our bonus offhand attack, which is what I was going to do anyway. But I would like to be set to dual wield so we can do that manually at our discretion later. This one's going to dash towards us as well. Ow! So we take 8 damage right there, which is horrendous. So we're going to look here for a healing potion. 2d4 plus 2 hit points. We get plus 8. That puts us back to our cap, which is good. Now, how do we want to deal with these guys? We've used our bonus action. Let's try a Dissonant Whispers. Level 1 enchantment spell. 3d6 psychic damage. And they become frightened. So we'll do that on the one with 9 hit points. 3d6 on average should do 10 and a half damage, so we should kill the Intellect Devourer more than half the time. Of course, that's only when we hit. They still have a 60% chance of being hit and a 40% chance of making the save for half. But that went pretty perfectly. They miss us this time, so we can hit them with our dagger for four. And that's that fight resolved. I don't think they have any stuff on their persons. Or well, they're... They're not really people, but you understand what I mean. 
And because we've now spent our spell slot, we can short rest up here. That refreshes our spell slot. That is the beauty of warlocks. Nothing on this person. Abducted commander. Another dagger. There's another abducted... Oh, not commanders. Commoners. Would help if I learned to read. And if we just hop up here to this high ground, we can see another intellect devourer Need to find a way forward. over there. And if we go to turn-based mode, let's try hiding. Then that was a bonus action, but in D&D 5th edition, unless you're a rogue, it's not a bonus action, it's a full action. So we'll forfeit our action here. See if they want to do anything or whether they're literally stuck on the environment. So we're now hidden and we get our attack roll. And that's going to be at advantage. And our stealth was successful. I think this guy is just stuck on the terrain. Which is a shame for them, but it's fine for me. That's that threat dealt with as well. So now we can hop on down, see what other supplies we can find. There's a chest and a dead mind flare up there, as well as this abducted nobleman. A rapier, silver locket, and an onion. So unfortunately that rapier, we are not proficient with martial weapons or rapiers, so we cannot make use of that. That's typically the better weapon for a rogue at 1d8 finesse and light. But we won't be able to make any use of that today. Let's hobble on up here. Let's see what this chest has for us. Basic poison is absolutely fine. Inside. And a dead mind flayer, a void bulb, and a potion of speed. So, with all of that looted, we're trying to make our way north as fast as we can. Without finding much in the way of any other encounters or interesting stuff because I want to save as much stuff as possible for after we have met Will. So first of all we have to find our way through this downed ship. There may be even more that survived the crash. Well these goblins definitely didn't. There's a supply pack for us. That's very nice. That's one free long rest. We're not proficient with that weapon either. I will take a healing potion. I'm also aware we're not terribly strong, so our carry weight is not going to be great between 120 pounds encumbered or 160 pounds heavily encumbered. Uh, but it seems like we can make our way the through there. If we just hop over this fire, hopefully, so we don't take any burn damage. Although evidently our jump is not terribly far. Still, we make it. That's good. If not over, then through. Right, where are we now? Over here. Lazel may well be in that cage, except she hasn't loaded in yet. Best be but, on my way. As I've said, we're just going to try and recruit Will as early as possible. So, let's stealth. Find our way up to this prime land here. And there's going to be a reasonably big battle going on. And we have one objective here. Keep Will alive. Because if Will dies, we obviously can't recruit him. Open the bloody gate! Nobody gets in! Zevlor's orders! That pack of goblins will be on us any second! What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gates, Zevlor, now! You let goblins hear? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! By the nine hells! Open the gates! uncomfortable, doesn't it? Shit! Form a line! Oh, 
All right, so we are rolled into initiative. We are no longer hiding, so we have been perceived. And if we just look over this way, there's Zevlor. Where is Will? Will is back up here. He will join the fray in just a moment, I think. And amazingly, we are at the very top of the order. And we have this goblin right in our face. So I think that's going to be our priority. Hello. Three on that. We can try for an offhand melee attack. Unfortunately, we miss. They do not have a melee weapon in their arms. So we are able to move away without taking an attack of opportunity. They'll still probably try and attack us, but it means the rest of them probably don't have a great line of sight. That went pretty well for them. Thankfully, they're not doing a great job of shooting us up here. I wonder if there's any chance that Zevlor can actually die during this fight, and as such, all of his plot points not resolve further on, if he got crit a couple of times or something. Sleep does have the chance of being a very big problem for Will and I, because we're both human and so we both are not able to benefit from elvish ancestry, which will protect us from sleep and sleep-like spells and charm effects. So that's going to be something to watch as things progress. But for now... Oh, that's a big miss. Alright, well you're here anyway. That's another big miss. There is no risk of being backstabbed anymore. I believe they took out that mechanic in patch 5, so we don't have to worry about turning to see our opponents. That was a big hit. So that removed our temporary hit points that we gained from the rallied condition, which is when that horn was blown. I guess Will must be level, yeah, level 2, given that he has 17 hit points already. Tormentum. Magic Missile, as ever, being incredibly OP. Oh, thanks for letting me do 2 damage there. I appreciate that. Alright. We got there with our offhand attack, though. Can't complain too much. This guy's still asleep, but not dead. And that witch bolt is a bad time. Okay, so from up here, we now have the ability to help out with our Eldritch Blast at a decent range. The game will move us forward in order to get us into range if it needs to. So let's go after this guy that's concentrating on this spell. There you go. So we do six damage. They have to make a check to concentrate on the spell they're trying to maintain. And because they failed that check, they are unable to maintain concentration on the spell and it is dropped. We've gained enough XP to level up there. But we have to wait for this. I assume we have to wait for the fight to resolve before we can do that. And this walk doesn't really know what it's doing. Yeah, it's not letting you try and level up in the middle of a fight, which is reasonable. 
I think Will's probably got this guy, although they're concentrating on Witch Bolt again. So if this one gets a turn before the spell can be removed, this guy's probably dead. So we'll try and help out here again. Perfect. I love it when a plan comes together. I think we did lose one of the humans here. Maybe two if that one's not still sleeping. So we just have Zakrug and the Warg left. And it looks like the Warg might be coming for us, which is a little bit terrifying. Let's go big here with our Dissonant Whispers, see if we can't make them frightened. Good, so they won't be able to come any closer to us now. That's a bad time for them. The warg is running from us. Eldritch Blast missing there. Back round to us again. Five damage is reasonable. But it is just us, Zevlor, and Will that are left. Everybody else has fallen. They're not having a great time of it this time. Last time I attempted this fight, we all survived and we got a point of inspiration for it from the soldier background, but I don't think we're going to be as lucky this time. 42% to hit with that, 65% to hit with this. However, they are going next, which is only slightly terrifying. It might be that our best bet here... Oh, okay. I didn't think we were in the attack of opportunity space there. It's going to be to dash directly away as best as we can so that they have to spend their turn dashing. I will take an emergency potion. Okay, they're not going after us, which is great. They've used mage armor again to protect themselves. Back to us once more. And hopefully between us, this should be soon over. One magic missile would do it. Flame Bolt's not going to cut it. Right now you'll see that they are just outside of this white line, which is our standard range, I think. So either we've got a worse attack or it's going to have to move us forward. Let's move forward of our own volition. No, it's still just 65%. Okay. The fight is over. We've learned about long rests. Will and Zevlor are going to head back on inside. We can pick through the spoils out here, but of course not of the humanoids. The tieflings are not very happy if you do that. So I'm going to leave the big heavy weapons that we can't equip. But I will take the cash and the scrolls and the like. So if we hover over Bath here, you'll see it's red because that would be considered stealing in the eyes of the survivors. Don't think I need a stuffed teddy bear. How about this bugbear? Nothing there but a skull, and I do not want a skull. And another bow. Okay. So, as much as that did not exactly go great for everybody else that died... We succeeded on our task of keeping Will alive. We've also got enough XP to go up to level 2. 
So join us next time where we will level up to level 2 Warlock and finish our recruitment of Will before then continuing on our adventures in the Dastardly Warlock Duo. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.